It was very interesting with Anand Maima, her body changed constantly. Her appearance changed constantly. She would look her age, like when she was in her 60s, 70s, and then suddenly she'd look like she was 14 years old. I have seen Ma, except for me, of course, <laughs> since I was six, two and a half. Uh, I've, I've been in a room where Ma was, and people were standing, Ma was the tallest person in the room except for me. And within half an hour, I've seen Ma be the shortest person in the room except for me. Her body was utterly fluid. Uh, her photographs, I think I've mentioned this, her photographs do not show what Ma looked like because she changed so much. When I went to India, I had seen, without exaggeration, about 300 photos of Ma that a friend of mine had these two gigantic albums and he'd managed to collect all these photos of Ma. And as is with the inconsistency of human beings, though he was able to, he never went to India to meet Ma. But anyway, I looked more than once through all these pictures. So when I saw Ma, I didn't recognize her. I recognized Ma because I recognized two people that always traveled with her and were in some of the photos. So I knew why well, that's Anand my Ma. Now I know that seems strange, but you see, she it was like a kaleidoscope. Of course, you saw it very continuously. So you didn't think, oh, there, oh, now different, no. But she did this. So if you see motion pictures of Ma, that's what she looked like. The camera could catch it. So there was always this kaleidoscope because she didn't have a mind. She said she had no mind at all. And uh, this was borne out. Uh, a friend of mine was in India visiting with Ma when some uh, scientists came and asked Ma if she would be willing uh, to be tested in their lab. Sort of was regarding a whole nervous system and function of her brain and so on. And she said, yes. Since she was a real thing, she didn't have to worry and say, uh, no, I'm sorry, I don't think that's appropriate. So she went to the lab. He went with her and a few people. So they said, well, first, Ma, we want to check your brain waves. So they hooked her up to an encephalograph, turned it on, and the needle just sat there. Didn't bother. And Ma started laughing, saying, oh, your machine must be broken. That's too bad. So they said, wait a minute. So one of them put it on their head, and here goes the needle. Put on somebody else's head, here goes the needle. Put it on Ma. No movement at all. Okay? Now, I prefer the witness of yogis. So for me, more, which I put more stock in even, I mean, that really happened, but and my friend witnessed it, and I, I believe it. But a friend of mine was a great yoga siddha. He was born a yogi. He worked miracles as an infant. If he wanted something, he'd put his hand out and cry and would fly across the room right into his hand. When he was uh, six years old, his father was the president of Kolhapur University, which was one of the most distinguished universities in India at that time. This is in Maharashtra, south of Bombay, Kolhapur is. So to entertain their guests, uh, they'd have one of them sit on the floor, hopefully in lotus posture, and they'd bring in this little boy, and he would just look at them, and they would spin around and around and around and around, just by the power of his mind, you see. So... You know, he wasn't one of these, oh, I had a vision of Krishna people. Uh, he was obviously doing things. When he went out on the street, people came running to him to touch him because he could cure sick people. And uh, anyway, so he told me that, uh, and interesting enough, by the way, he had all these kind of experiences and insights, and he was a super, super genius. And he told me, in all the world, nobody knows who I'm talking about but Ma, when I describe these things. He said, Ma often explains to me 
the things that happened to me or the things that happened to me earlier. So anyway, he said, I, I had read that Ma said she didn't have a mind. So I thought, well, that's ridiculous. I'll read her mind. In fact, he described to me what he would experience when he read an ordinary person's mind, that he would start, he'd know a lot about their body, then he would see the mind, the thoughts in the mind and so on. Ultimately, he would come to the Atma. He said, in everyone, there's infinite silence that is the Atma. So he went back to where he was staying after he'd heard mother said this. And he sat down and he decided to tune in and read her mind. And he said, there was nothing but infinity, just pure infinite consciousness. That was it. And since she was uh, everything, then she could do everything. And she did amazing things. And uh, her body then was, as I say, very fluidic like that.